last time we got gene sequences from the NCBI database so it's the penicillin binding 1A for Neisseria so what I was going to do is just show how to get the amino acid sequence for that and then from the amino acid sequence carry out some alignments and look at the differences in the gene sequences will might or might not affect the protein for each of the different strains or species that you're looking at so then if you do have changes in the protein you can actually go on from that and identify where in the protein these changes have taken place and you might find checking back in literature and so on that this is something that's been seen before so the first thing I'll do is I'll get the gene sequence from the NCBI database so penicillin binding 1 in Neisseria what I did is I scrolled down and then I found Neisseria subflava here so if I click on that one and then I go on faster So I had the gene sequence, so a couple of ways you can do this, you can actually copy it straight from this page or you can go here, send to, file, faster, create file and then if you look at that, you see that's the gene sequence there. So you can either save it to a file um, and call it something, its gene name or something that you recognise. All right, like that, or you can copy it from the page. It doesn't look quite so neat when you paste it again. But if you copy that, I'm going to blast, paste it in here. Okay, then the, the settings that you want, you can choose reference sequences, so complete genomes, or, you know, partially complete, which would be whole genome there. So Neisseria subflava, so you're looking for that gene sequence only in Neisseria subflava. I selected more dissimilar, just in case it's not identical or very close to identical. Show results in new window and then I hit blast. When I did that, I got a list of similar genes in other Neisseria subflava. So this is the output. You can see, now as far as I know there's 15... Neisseria subflava on the database at the moment and you can see here 15 sequences selected so it looks like there's something fairly similar in most of well all of the database Neisseria subflava so for each one of these what we were saying was you want to get the amino acid sequence so say if you go on to this first one here for the subflava ATCC 49275 you click on there this is the gene sequence alignment so one way to get the amino acid sequence is on here it's got a sequence ID here it says within the genome between these coordinates that's where the gene is so if you go on the gem bank at that point and then if you scroll down the page You'll see here it's penicillin binding 1A, got your amino acid sequence and then below it you've got the gene sequence. So to get the protein sequence or the amino acid sequence it says here protein ID and then that. Okay, so if you click on that, that's only then the amino acid sequence. So to get that in faster format, click on faster. So this is for that particular genome. So then you can copy this. If you go into a notepad, I'll just demonstrate file, new window. Remember the header for FASTA. Paste the sequence, call this ATCC49275. I'll just do one more. Go on to BLAST, descriptions. The next one is this one here that ends in 1510, so click on that, click on GenBank, scroll down, 
see here protein ID and then faster the amino acid sequence can be in faster as well okay so you can copy it uh, paste again and 1510 say for example when you've done that okay you'll have a complete list of the amino acid sequences for all those genomes there might be a quick way of doing this but this is if you do it individually okay you can see here I've put one together for all 15 of the different Neisseria subflava genomes. Now just looking at that you can't see any obvious things that stand out as being different. So what I do then is if you go into Cluster Lamiga, go into Input Form, select Protein here. I've saved this file and I've called it Penicillin Binding 1 Amino Acid. Go on to Cluster Amiga, select Protein here, Browse. Now wherever you saved that file, just open it up. So that's in there now. And then click Submit. So it's going to align all the sequences and then that should highlight the differences between them. In addition, I added in Neisseria lactamica, Neisseria gonorrhea and three meningitidus sequences in there just to see how they compared to the sequences for Neisseria subflava. On here you can do show colours as well. This highlights the different residues in different colours. I mean some blocks are red but you can see it makes it easier to see the differences. So you can see here for the lactamica, the gonorrhea and so on there's difference here um, again somewhere around here as well so that's one thing you can do and then there's a simple phylogenetic tree function as well if you want to look how these cluster in terms of similarity so if you go on phylogenetic tree that will then cluster the sequences okay according to uh, similarity so you can see here this block here consists of meningitis gonorrhea, lactamica and this is one of the commensals actually as well here so it's sort of fallen in this block with the pathogens and lactamica okay this is another block of subflava again you can see down to about there and then again these are probably quite similar as you can see that's just a good way of looking at how they cluster just to give you an idea but if we go back to alignments there's something else you can do as well alone it doesn't really tell you too much you know there's differences in there but there's another thing that you can do at this point just open up a new tab if you type in smart genome and here smart main page is the simple modular architecture research tool so this will help you look at protein domains if you just select one of your penicillin binding proteins so yeah, for example this one copy it in there paste your sequence and then if you select these boxes as well outlier homologs identify anything fairly similar domains as well signal peptides you can look for the presence of those and any other structures or it repeats in there just tick all of those and then you get a, a more in-depth output then if you hit smart it's working on you know calculating the domains in there there's two functions here you've got genomic and normal okay you can look into what those do but genomic will actually search database of already annotated proteome so i'll try and compare this to something that's already been annotated i did one earlier i'll just bring it up when that's actually completed you'll get an output that looks like this okay this is quite useful you can go over here onto this image and click each of these so here you've got a transmembrane region it will also give you the sequence the amino acid sequence the end terminal sequence and some information as well on what that actually is 
and then towards the other end you've got the C terminal and some information as well and for each of these you've got an amino acid sequence what you can do at this point is if you open up Word now this is something I, I did for myself so you know you, you can experiment with it just to see what you can actually do but if you go on to here you can then select the sequence okay for each part and you can annotate it on an image so okay so when you completed doing your personal annotation you can see I just put an image of the protein here with the predicted domains and then I've annotated what, what that means on here so you've got the transmembrane region the N terminal um, and then the, the C terminal here so you can do that and then when you go to your alignment you can see where there are differences in the sequence here you can actually see what that relates to in terms of the protein domain so if you just select one that's a little bit further along select part of the sequence where you can see that there's a difference go on here and search so you can see that that particular change is within a region in between these domains okay but you might find if you go through okay this might be useful to you I don't know but as you go through you can see um, you know how those changes relate to different proteins and it might obviously affect changes in the, the domains might could affect the function of the protein and like I said obviously some of these might have been seen before so you can see that particular one um, in subflava it's within um, this particular region here so anyway that's pretty much um, what I wanted to say so it's just going really from the gene sequence okay so you've got the gene sequence then getting a list up through blast for all of those sequences in a particular species so in this case Neisseria subflava collating that into a list then aligning them which is useful and then going a bit further and look at the domains so it's got a fair bit of information as well on the domains so I hope that's helped a bit if you want to leave a comment let me know I'll try and help a bit more by it